Once most folks get started with smart home products, they find one big problem. Getting these things to talk to each other. Do you want to have your smart vacuum start when nobody's home? Do you want your bedroom lights to come on when you remove your phone from its charger? Do you want to control your LG WebOS TV from Google Assistant? Now these might be possible with some brands in their native application, but it's far from universal. The solution that almost everybody tells you to turn to is Home Assistant. This open source smart brain will run on almost anything and is very easy to install. But most tutorials, including mine, tell you to run out and buy a Raspberry Pi. But have you looked at the price of these things online lately? It's nuts. The enterprising folks on the Home Assistant community forum came up with an idea. This is a small PC known as a thin client. Companies tend to buy these so they don't have to send the IT guy out every time somebody has a problem. These devices typically boot up and then connect to a remote desktop server. Connecting the user's monitor, keyboard, and mouse to a desktop running on a server anywhere in the world. And the best part about all this, you can find some of these microcomputers for not much more than a fully kitted out Raspberry Pi used to cost. While this is not as dead simple as setting up a Raspberry Pi, it is quite easy and pretty accessible for folks of all levels. So let's take a look at setting up Home Assistant on one of these. Hey there neighbors, welcome to this smart house. If this is your first time here, thanks for watching. Now I'm gonna take you through this process step by step. From what hardware to buy, how to assemble it, flashing Home Assistant, and finally getting your system set up. Best of all, if you run into any issues, feel free to drop me a comment down below or join our Discord server. I really do try and help everyone that I can. Now you might remember my original video on installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi I released back in 2021. While that tutorial is still relevant today, you just can't get a hold of the hardware easily. So that's where this comes in. I purchased this Dell Wise thin client off of eBay for around $70. This one is the Wise 5070, and it's basically a quad-core Intel Celeron PC. This one came with 8 gigs of RAM and a tiny 32 gigabyte hard drive. It does come equipped with a built-in Wi-Fi card, but mine didn't include any antennas. So if you do want to actually use your home assistant on Wi-Fi, you'll need to pick up the antennas for this, which I've got links in the kit, which we'll talk about in the next section. And with that, let's jump into the hardware you're gonna to need to get started. So of course, we've already briefly touched on the thin client PC, but let's go into a little bit more detail about what's required. So to make things super convenient, I've got everything in a kit on the link here below. For the thin client, I have an eBay search link down there so you can find what stock is available. Now you may be asking, can I just use any old PC that I have lying around the house? Of course you can. We don't really need much in the way of hardware for all but the most beefy of Home Assistant installations. These thin clients are regular 64-bit base computers, but just smaller with lower power consumption. Like I mentioned before, most folks find these thin clients on eBay, but you can also check your local computer shops and even some government auction websites. You're looking for something with a relatively modern Intel or AMD-based processor. Again, this one only has a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Intel Celeron processor, so you don't need really anything too large. Now, one critical factor when purchasing one of these off of eBay is whether or not you actually get a power adapter with them. These small computers don't have your standard ATX power supplies that just plug into an AC cord. So you wanna make sure you actually go ahead and purchase the thin client with the power adapter. Now at the time, it might seem like a good deal to save 10 bucks and buy the cheaper unit without a power adapter, but these can be kinda of hard to find and can get very pricey. So go ahead and just buy the one with the power adapter. Now I went with a version that already had eight gigabytes of RAM pre-installed, but you can probably get away with four gigs just to start. The nice thing is you can always upgrade the RAM later on, just like any other computer. Now the thin clients typically come with a very tiny 16 or 32 gigabyte hard drive. Now this isn't gonna be enough for our purposes. So we're gonna to need to purchase an additional drive. Now if you look at the specifications online before you purchase the computer, or when you get it, crack it open, you can see what type of drive it supports. Now in the case of the Wise 5070, it supports an M2 SATA drive. Now these small solid state drives can be a bit confusing. The M2 SATA and the NVMe drives look very similar. You'll notice that the interface for the M2 SATA has two notches. This is called a B plus M key. The NVMe drive, on the other hand, only has one. This is an M key. Then you're looking for an M2 SATA drive with the B and M keys. Now, some other PCs might support full-size SATA drives, which those are pretty dirt cheap. Now, you can pick up the appropriate size drive from anywhere between $20 and $50, depending on what size you're looking at. Now, you're gonna need something 250 gigs or bigger, I bought a one terabyte drive, but this is overkill and not necessary for Home Assistant. Now there are actually two ways of going about installing Home Assistant on the thin client, which I'll talk about in the next section. But for the easy method, I recommend picking up one of these USB-C to M2 SATA adapters. 
They're around $15 to $20 on Amazon and will save you a ton of time on this project. This allows you to open it up and put your drive inside of here and then connect it over USB-C to your computer. Finally, you're gonna need some sort of ethernet cable. If you wanna use ethernet to connect this to your home network or if using Wi-Fi, you'll need to pick up a pair of the antennas if your thin client supports that. Now you can do this entire setup without ever connecting the thin client to a monitor, but just in case you run into issues, it's nice to have the accessories you need. Now, if you're picking up a Dell computer, you're gonna need one of these DisplayPort to HDMI adapters. Unless, of course, you already have a DisplayPort display, but nobody really has those. You might wanna also pick up a keyboard and mouse out of your closet. This is just in case you run into problems and you need to get into the command line. But for most folks, you'll just need a display. All right, now that we have our hardware established, let's head into the office and get Home Assistant flashed and set up on this device. So I mentioned before that there are actually two methods for how to set this up. The first, which is the cheaper, but I would think more difficult, you're actually going to install Ubuntu to a flash drive, use that flash drive to boot up your new thin client. This thin client will already have the new hard drive installed in it. You'll boot up into Ubuntu, and then using Ubuntu, you'll install Home Assistant on the new hard drive that's inside of there. I'm not gonna go into detailed steps of that, but I do have a link down in the description to a set of instructions on how to do this if you want to attempt it. If you do have questions, let me know down in the comments. The second, but what I think is the easier method, is to use that USB to MSATA adapter we talked about in the last step. All right, so now what we need to do is take our new hard drive, this is the one you purchased, and place it in your hard drive adapter. Now, depending on which version of one of these you picked up, some of them require a screw, some of them don't. This one from Sabrent, you just press the button on the back, open it up. You can insert the hard drive in and then use the little toggle switch at the top to secure it into place. Once you do that, close it back up again and connect it via USB-C to your computer. Next, we're gonna use the instructions that are provided by the Home Assistant documentation. Now I've got a short link here below directly to that documentation, but it's for generic x86-64 computers. So these instructions will work for an Intel NUC or NUC for short, the thin client we're using today, or any PC that you wanna use. Now, at the top of the instruction set, they're gonna talk about configuring the BIOS. On mine, I didn't have to do any of this because the thin client that I'm using was already configured properly. Then we're gonna start down here at write the image to your boot medium. So for this section, we're gonna need an application called Etcher, which you have a link right here to it. It's free. Make sure you're running a later version of it because they only introduced the flash from URL in the recent versions. So we'll click on it and go ahead and download it for your particular platform. In my case, of course, I'm running Windows. All right, now that Etcher's set up, we'll go ahead and use this flash from URL option here. So I'm gonna go down here and grab this link below. This will grab the latest Home Assistant OS. So just for a quick point of clarification, we're going to be installing the full Home Assistant OS on the thin client. Unlike some other versions, this will actually have access to the supervisor, which gives you access to add-ons and things like that. So this will be identical to the version that you get on the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to step four, copy this generic URL, and then we're gonna paste it into here. And we'll click OK. What that's gonna do is gonna go ahead and grab the latest version straight from the Home Assistant servers, and that way you don't have to mess with it. And we're gonna select Target. Now in here, make sure you select the correct device, because if you select the wrong device, if you have, like me and have more than one device plugged in, you will erase it and be very sad. So make sure you're selecting the correct one. For example, this is my editing hard drive, so I will not be selecting it. The second one is an SD card. The third one here is this Sovereign SCSI disk device, and this is the correct one for me. So I'm gonna select it and say select one. And now that I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and click flash. And because this is a large drive, it's warning me, hey, make sure that you're actually using this correct drive, which I am, this is the correct one. Now you'll probably get a prompt on Windows to accept kicking into administrator mode. Make sure you accept that because if not, it won't work. Now this is gonna take a few minutes to finish up setting up this drive. So we'll skip through that. Now, if you do run into a problem and you cannot flash from the URL, you can go ahead and grab the image file directly from the Home Assistant server, download it, and flash it. So to do that, just paste that URL up into your address bar, and Windows should automatically download it. Once it's downloaded, then we'll go back into Etcher, say flash from file, select the file from our download folder, select our target again, click flash, and yes, I'm sure. A few moments later. All right, so as you can see, flash has been completed. So now we have the Home Assistant OS uncompressed on our hard drive. Now all we need to do is take the hard drive out of the adapter, and then we're gonna swap with the existing drive in the thin client. So once you open up the case on the thin client, you'll see that the hard drive is held in with one single screw. Take that screw out, make sure not to lose it. Pull out the existing MSATA drive, 
put the new drive in and secure it with the screw. Now you can go ahead and close everything back up again and we can get everything set back up. All right, once the hard drive is installed in the thin plate, all you need to do is go ahead and plug in the power, plug in your ethernet and boot it up. And one of the things I noticed was the power button's a little strange the first time you power it up. So I actually had to double press the power button before it actually powered on with the new hard drive in it. So just keep that in mind. Once the unit's powered on, go ahead and give it five or 10 minutes to make sure that it's completely set up. Then open up a browser and go to homeassistant.local colon 8123. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work and immediately resolve you to the server, then you'll need to jump into your router or firewall and check the DHCP tables. This will typically tell you when a new device gets connected to your network. If all else fails, then we'll hop to connect it to a monitor or screen. Now, when you connect it to the monitor or screen, you should either be seeing text fly by like this, or when it's finished, you'll see it pop up and say home assistant at the top. And then right below that, it'll give its IP address. So with this information in hand, let's go ahead and get connected. Now, if for some reason you're not getting any output or you're seeing some errors on the screen, I'd recommend reflashing the hard drive, starting over again. That typically takes care of most problems. Now that we can connect to our Home Assistant instance, let's go ahead and get it onboarded. All right, now that our Home Assistant Thin Client has been booted up and we can see its IP address, we can get started with setup. All right, so we now know the IP address of the device is 192.168.1.10.8123. And there we go. There's a Home Assistant onboarding. So quickly we'll go through how to onboard and then I'll give you a couple of recommendations of where to start. So you wanna give yourself a name, a super secure password. So if you are moving your Home Assistant instance from a Raspberry Pi to a thin client, then you can actually back up what they used to call snapshot your existing Home Assistant operating system and then restore it on here. So you can load it onto a flash drive or load it onto the hard drive itself, plug it into the device, and then you could say restore from backup at this screen and you'll be able to just restore all your settings over from there. But note, if you have things like Z-Wave controllers, you may have to go in and tell it a new device ID. So click create account, give it a name. You can set what country you're in, what time zone you're in. You can use the detect button here at the top to have it use your IP address to give an idea of where your house is. So mine shows somewhere in Kansas City, which is not correct. Then you can drag it to your exact location. You can set your elevation, which you can look this up online, what your elevation is at your current location. Set your unit system and your currency. Click next. And then you can set up what type of statistical information you give out to Home Assistant. So basic analytics, usage, statistical data, or diagnostics. I just enabled them all, but it's up to you. Then it's gonna give you the screen where it's gonna show you everything that's discovered on your network. So these are things that are just set automatically from Home Assistant that you can go ahead and configure and set up on here. So this is a great place to start if this is your first time. This will tell you everything that's on your network that's capable for Home Assistant to control. And as you can tell, I have a ton of things. So I'm gonna skip this step for right now and click finish. And there you go. Now you have Home Assistant up and functional. Now, of course, this is just a local installation of Home Assistant. You won't be able to get access to this from the cloud. You'll need to go through and set up all your individual integrations and add-ons. All right, so now you have a fully functional Home Assistant instance running on your thin client. The nice thing about this thin client is it has a ton of USB ports on it, so you can plug in things like Z-Wave or Zigbee sticks. You can connect this to a UPS if you want to monitor that. The possibilities are endless. So I would recommend, once you get this set up, see what devices your Home Assistant can find in your house, get those set up, play with those, start doing some automations. If you have a particular set of items that you want to automate, start with the integrations. Make sure there's not an already built-in integration in the Home Assistant for it. If you do have something specific that you're looking for, let me know down in the comments. If I've got a video about it, I've got a whole playlist right here of all the Home Assistant add-ons and integrations that I've done videos on. If you did make it this far, thanks for watching. Again, I hope this is a helpful video for those of you trying to get started with Home Assistant and giving you an alternative method other than trying to find a very expensive Raspberry Pi on the secondary market somewhere. Hopefully soon, Raspberry Pis will come back into stock and it won't be as much of an issue, but I do think I'll be transitioning my Home Assistant from my eight gig Raspberry Pi over to this thin client just because it's got a little bit more flexibility than that one does. Again, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments below or jump on our Discord server. I try to be on there daily, so you can feel free to jump into one of the channels and ask a question. Now, if you're super excited and you've got your Home Assistant set up, go ahead and check out this playlist here where I take you through all the different add-ons that I've reviewed and worked with. Or you can look down here and it will take you through some of the hardware that I've done integrations for Home Assistant with. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next video.